Today we're going to take this architectural shell, it's just a very basic outline of the building modelled in Rhino and we're going to create a parametric script, model it in 3D so we can give it back to the architect, produce calculations and then finally get some engineering drawings with Rhino inside Revit. So I've got this new preliminary architectural model and the architect wants some structural feedback ASAP and they want it in model form as well as plans. In the old days you'd be able to wait for the architect to do some drawings but these days the architects don't really have time to do that anymore in a lot of cases depending on what type of project you're working on. So I'll just turn that to shaded and then the first thing I've done is just I've quickly selected those end members and put it onto a separate layer so I'll turn that off. Um, I'll also turn off the glazing and the external and then I've already just quickly drawn in some points you can see these points here and all I've done is I've gone to the edges of the cladding and I've just moved it down by 200 mil just to give me some tolerance um, for the thickness of the cladding so that my framing doesn't stick out depending on what size I choose then I'm just simply going to join these points with lines and this is going to be the basis of my framing, a parametric framing so now I've got all those lines drawn in I'm just going to turn off the cladding and internal and then I'm just going to bring up Grasshopper and bring those lines into Grasshopper these are just curve components where I've separated out the roof, the columns, etc. So what this allows me to do is I can start drawing or copying that portal or that framing along the length of the building based on the spacing and all I'm doing there is I've got that line as the length of the building and then I'm dividing it up by the number so you can see for this roof for example if I preview that it's got 10 rafters and I can just change that by sliding that you can see I've done that also with beams running along the length of the building and I've got some secondary framing as well for the floor and this didn't take long to set up it's only 10-15 minutes and then the whole framing comes in there and obviously I can change the number of portals um, and I can also change the spacing of things like the Gertz and purlins on the walls, Gertz on the walls and the purlins on the roof. And this internal beams in here, you can change the number of them as well just by sliding. So I've gone through and selected what I think is reasonable spacing for all those elements just with the sliders. And now I'm going to render some steel work on top of it. You might have seen these components from my other videos. It just allows you to turn lines into real structural members. And now the next step is to do some design on this steel and assign some proper member sizes. So the first elements to design are these big portal frames because wind traveling in the X direction from left to right is going to be resisted by this big portal so the architect has lots of space allocated in here for the client to do their industrial stuff 
in the other direction in the Y axis, so left to right. <clears throat> As I've got it here, we can just put some cross bracing between the portals, so that will be pretty easy. So all I've done is I've used this tree branch to select just the portals out of all that framing. And I'm using Kiwi here. You can use Karamba as well or some other plugin for Grasshopper. And I've got, uh, I'm using this component to say I'm putting the load onto these columns in this direction. So the cladding will span the other way. Now I've already worked out roughly what the service load and the ultimate load state wind will be. This is just a demonstration. And I've got some support points down the bottom for the portals. So if I enable that, you can see the model that Kiwi thinks is happening. That's my wind load. They're the joints of the portals which are fixed and down here I've got pins so it's a classic portal so now if I run that with the service load case serviceability you can see we're way off with the section that I've got chosen which is a 200 UB <clears throat> which makes sense there's no way that size would be able to resist that amount of wind and I'm deflecting 6.2 meters, so that's a long, long way off. So let's try a big chunky section of a 410, see how that goes. <clears throat> so that's a lot, lot better. But still, I'm about half, over half a meter deflection at the top. Now, roughly, I want height on 500, which is about 20 mil. So we're still quite a long way off. So let's go to our 530 and try that one out. So now that's 200 mil, that's, that's still quite a way off. Let's go to an 800 WB. 63 mil, getting closer. So pretty big sections these. Let's, let's go straight to a, a 1000. 24 mil, that's not bad. I still, I think I can stick with a thousand and let's try a heavier section. So yeah, that's fine. In fact, we can probably go down one. Um, the second lowest 1000 WB, yeah, 18 mil. That's fine, that's good. So let's just check the ultimate load case. And I'm gonna turn off deflection for this because it doesn't apply. I just want to check the forces so as you can see the moment maxes out at about almost 400 kilonewton meters and as you expect with a portal it's pinned down the bottom so zero now this is simple I haven't put load on the roof yet although it will be lightweight so it won't weigh much but I know I'm roughly in the ballpark there so I'm gonna for preliminary design and for this demo purpose I'm going to stick with that. The next thing I'm going to do is size up some of these floor beams and the roof beams on this section of the building and I'm going to do this with a script that some have seen before in my other videos and it basically does a calculation sheet as you go so I'm just going to select some of these elements um, and gives you the works out the load width automatically and gives you a calculation sheet. As you can see, a 610 UB is working really easily. Um, a 200 UB isn't working at all. Let's try a 410. It's not too bad. Um, it's deflecting a bit too much though. So strength-wise it works. Let's try uh, the 460. Yeah, that works. What about the bigger 410? 
Yeah, let's stick with that big 410 there. And then if I go the other way, I'll check this beam and the load width is between those beams. And that's spanning between those two columns there. So yeah, the 410 is way too small. Let's go up to a 530, still too small, 610, just. Slightly heavier 610 works for deflection and strength. And I'm just gonna print that out and save it for the building surveyor or anyone who wants to check my calculations. And I'm just going to do the same for the roof beam, but I won't film it. So coming back to my render, I'm just going to build up a schedule of those section sizes that I've calculated there. So 1000 WB258, a 410 UB59.7, the 610 UB, etc. Now I'm going to quickly assign those section sizes to the model and it's easy because I've split those members up already so I can just flick through them you can see as I as I move the slider it's selecting different parts of the model based on what their role is so the first lot is this top rafter beam and I want that to be the 1000 WB so that's schedule item number one so I just apply that and then refresh and that looks good however that is all based on center geometry, center line geometry. So if I turn on the cladding, you can see the steel is sticking out from the roof. So I actually want that on uh, top so that the top flange is flush with that line. So if I apply that and refresh it again, There we go, that's better, and we've got some room for our purlins, so these will become purlins later. And then I'll just go through and do the rest of it. The next one will be number one, and that will be these column sections here, which again are going to be number one. And let's just do it, and I'll show you that I might have to change that orientation as well. So that's come in has a 1000 WB but it's it's rotated the wrong way so I need a 90 degree rotation on that and let's see yep that's good so we've got our gap for our girts and it's not sticking out of the cladding line so that's good and next I'll move on to doing the rest of these, but I won't film that just to make this video a bit quicker. And so that's all the steelwork modelled for that version. And you can see if I turn the cladding on, none of it sticks out from any windows or anything, or out the top of the roof. Everything's in line with the architecture. So we can just bake that to a Rhino file and send it straight to the architect and then they can see how it works with their floor layouts, etc. And now I can very quickly get some engineering drawings using Revit and that framing we've already got. If I just load Grasshopper with Rhino inside Revit, I've got the curves, which are the center lines of the beams. So you can see them in Revit there. 
and I've brought in the schedule that we did before. Now the curves are split into beam types exactly the same way as before and if I give those same indexes the types with this type component I can bring in the beams and columns and that's all these numbers are here. So if I bring in the columns and you can see they're native Revit columns so they've got all the same properties and you can just use them as native Revit elements and then I'll bring in the beams as well. Takes a couple of seconds because there's quite a few beams. And there we are. So you probably noticed for this example I haven't scripted in the rotation for these columns and also bringing in the uh, origin or top for the beams to get them to the right level but that's pretty easy to do in Grasshopper, it doesn't take very long. Now those levels were set up already so the sheets basically automatically are generated at those levels. So level one, it's got a beam schedule. That's my schedule from before and the column schedule. I just annotate all those. There you've got your framing plan for level one. Got a roof plan. I'll annotate that. And then you've got your elevations as well, which I set up. An elevation at the end and a long elevation. So pretty simple to do once you've got the model in to produce plans. Thanks for watching this structured parametrics video. Leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one.